is up guys, my name is Defton, welcome back to some more Dark Souls 2, and it has been all too long since I played this series with you guys, and in the last one, we took out the Duke's Tear Frasia, and you may be asking yourselves, where do we go next? We've seen just about every little branching pathway from all the previous areas, well, except for, except for one, there's one boss that I've been sort of saving for a while, and don't think I've forgotten about it, but anyway... Where I'm heading next oh, hello, on this journey here is I'm going to talk to Lisha. You, you can actually access this area this um, as soon as you meet her after seems. defeating the Dragon Rider in um, Hyde's Tower of Flame. And, and so, you know, you could go this way and through this whole area before any of these others. I mean, you can face the Lost Sinner last if you'd like. I've just in all my playthroughs really faced him first. Shall I provide it's sort of the one? it's sort of the way that it takes you. It's the most like obvious path. And uh, well, honestly, I don't know if you could say he's the easiest of the four great ones. But um, he's definitely got an area with like the most small. Nah, I'd, I'd have to say uh, in Frasia's battle, you have the most area to run around and dodge attacks. But you've also got. All the spider minions, and if you're for, and if you try and you know keep your distance, she'll blast you with that laser beam. Which I don't remember if I we saw that attack when I faced her. But anyway, we're gonna move the path. We're gonna pay her two K souls, and she's gonna move the path. That's originally how we got to Hyde's Tower of Flame, and it's gonna rotate this whole area. We're gonna gain access to this one. Go ahead. Your... All right, yeah, and you can also buy all sorts of miracles and uh, cleric gear from her if you'd like. Real water, but yeah, I'm not really using magic in this playthrough; just sort of doing things the bare bones way. This is how I've beaten the game in the pet. Well, I don't know the character I've uh, grown the most accustomed to that I um, have gotten the furthest with is a mage. But uh, in my original playthroughs of the game, I wasn't really too sure how magic worked. And here we have a mysterious man um, sitting in a chair staring at a wall. The dark stairs. Well, ooh, we do have the stats to talk to him. My name is Elgin. Awesome. I will track you to what you need. Cool, I, I, I didn't know that they had. I think you need uh, 10 faith to talk to him, or 10 faith and 10 intelligence. I mean, if I have that, I have that, <laughs> nothing higher. Yeah, he'll sell you Archstrick, Staff, and Chime. These are both pretty decent. Um, at least the, uh, the Chime is solid. Staff, I think might be outweighed by um, your uh, the default staff you start with. You can get a Ring of Life Protection. It says nullifies death but breaks, but I forget exactly how it works. I think what it does is it'll allow you to keep your souls upon death. I mean, at first I thought, I'm like, oh cool, it's like it's like an extra life. So I just, I mean, I had almost enough to put them all as, ugh. <laughs> I think I had like, because you get a couple of these throughout the game. I So I literally just like threw all of them on at once. I'm like, ha ha, I can never die. And nope, I died just fine. And it'll also apply, uh, give you dark pine resin and a couple of hexes and uh, magic barrier. He gives you some good hexes. Uh, what you want to do is you want to talk to him once you have 20 intelligence and faith. Which I, yeah, I don't have. Yeah, now typically I would sort of uh, exhaust everyone's dialogue, but Falcon, it doesn't matter he'll keep uh you know telling you his story over and over again and uh, nothing will change until you have 20 faith and 20 intelligence and he will give you his gear which is pretty solid it's decent he'll give you his uh, sunset staff which is excuse me which is decent but um and he'll give you the hexer set which is also decent for mage gear, but what you really want is the Hexer's Hood that he has, which will increase your spell uses. That's something you definitely need when you are a mage, because you have limited spell uses. And here we go, we got these guys to deal with now. Luckily I've got a bow. Ah, oh, I thought I was far enough away. 
Let's use ourselves a little poison moss and gonna show you. G well, and eh, we'll go back to it. We'll go back to it. So let's continue on our way, not letting these guys sneak up on us, even though they're somewhat frail and really aren't much to worry about. But better dead than alive. Better, better not have to worry about them. Here we got this nice dark room. Something I actually noticed watching a playthrough recently is you can knock these out and then we'll let light in. You can actually sort of see what's going on around here. Now I'm gonna grab these items before I continue onward. Yeah, these guys hiding. Luckily, they've only got those flimsy little wooden swords. Not the flimsy little wooden swords that are enchanted with dark or curse or something. Like they are in the gutter, which can do some serious damage, believe it or not. You wouldn't really feel threatened by these guys, but when they have this sort of uh, enchanted, um, you know, and they have their crappy little wooden swords that appear to be enchanted and like glowing with a dark aura, those will mess you up. So anyway, once you drop down here, you cannot get back up to the original path, so you're going to have to go out this way. Climb up this ladder here, up to the roof. Yeah, this guy here, and you got another guy who's gonna try and sneak up over, you know, over there. Ah! Yeah, he just jumps up from somewhere. Ooh, what'd I get? Throw a knife, yeah! <laughs> drop down, get ourselves some poison moss and a life gem. Whoopee. Drop down. Now we can go back around. And uh, watch out on this door here. If you try to open it, you're getting hit, guaranteed. Let's see. Turn the corner, but be careful. Keep your shield up. Get yourself a cracked red eye orb here. And we can just roll off. This isn't very high. And there's a bonfire right around the corner, so I don't need to worry. We're going to rest at it. Because we can, and it's not like we're going to be facing the enemies that we had to face to get here, really. And, uh, you can knock down this tree, a little shortcut. I guess in case you didn't discover that bonfire, it'll be a little shortcut from bonfire number one to, uh, toward the end. But I'm going back. You're going to find out why in just a second. Let's see here. Now let's get that bow out. Usually down one hit. Now we are going to equip Silver Cat Ring. And we're going to look over the edge. Find those mushrooms there. And we're going to run. Land down one of those. Drop down. And uh, drop down once more. And bada bang, bada boom. We got one of these douchebags to deal with. These guys are. These guys, regardless of how strong you are, they will hit hard. And it's not fun! Oh, that actually didn't hit very hard. Maybe it's because I'm going a little try hard on this one. I've got uh, them girls set and the drink like set. You know, I've got like the heaviest, most, you know, best defensive, best physically defensive set you can get at the time. Well, granted, there's, uh, there's Havel's set, or Havel's set as I've heard it pronounced, but I call it Havel's, which you can get at just about any point in time. But it requires a great deal of patience in getting the key to unlock it. Anyway, we can't get that. We're just gonna continue on. Wait, now, did I open the chest? Yeah, I opened the chest. We got a uh, Ricard's Repier, I believe. Anyway. Oh, yeah, I knew there's an item. Large soul of a nameless soldier, and we're gonna hop in this here. It's gonna lift us up. And, uh, the area proceeding's gonna look a little familiar. I'm gonna turn the corner, open this illusory wall, and, uh, there you go, you're back in here. Now, the thing is, you cannot open it from this side, only from the opposite side. So, uh, yeah, if you're in here and you want to open it from that side to get to the chest and all that, not going to happen. It don't work like that. 
But anyway, we're gonna head out of here. I'm gonna keep my silver cat ring on. Protect me from this upcoming fall. Come here. Bam! Over here. Bam, I just... Oh, I'm just nice and beefy. Got lots of poise. I only need to worry about taking hits. Especially with the bonfire right around the corner. We're gonna rest up once more. And I'm gonna say that I hope you guys enjoy this episode of Dark Souls 2. And um, I hope you'll be joining me next time where I continue down this path here. Maybe snag that item. Maybe the one that's a little further away and uh, see what lies ahead. Um, and also a little preview, I guess, of what's to come. Check that out. Check out this giant uh, coliseum of sorts. Yeah, lots coming in the future. So look forward to that. But until then, I'll be seeing you guys later. I'm out.